Amen. Amen. This is God's time. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we are truly blessed and thankful. God, for another opportunity, Lord, just to come in here and to give you honor and glory and worship. And Father, I pray, God, that you come down in this place. God, you walk up and down the aisles of this sanctuary. God, fill this room, God, with your Shekinah glory. God, just let the Holy Ghost have his way here this morning. God, move in this house. God, do your work and your will. God, bless this offering. Use it, multiply it, and God, let it be a blessing. Father, we pray all this today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's worship him this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I thought Pastor was going to start preaching. Amen. Good seeing everybody out this morning. Even some new faces. Good seeing the Fouts. Amen. God bless you. Let's open up worship this morning. Sister Darla leads us into the course of this song. It's welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit, be here with your presence, fill me with your power, live inside of me. Sing in church. Welcome, Holy Yeah. 
thirst for this is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus, and this is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus, and so precious is the blood. One more time, my life is not my own. My life is not my own. 
We've seen, seen God move, and we've seen God move, and we've seen him do miracles. We've seen Israel when they were captive, and, and, and God showed miracle after miracle, the, the, the blood uh, you know, turning into the water, all that other stuff, that one after the other. And then here they get to the Red Sea, and they forgot what God already did all that other time. And it's like, what's going to happen? And, you know, the sad thing is, is I don't know what you're going through this morning. I don't know what your trouble is. I don't know what your struggle is. But I just want to tell you, God's taken care of you before. He's going to take care of you now. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm here to tell you, you look to God and he's going to bring you through. It might seem rough right now. It might seem like there's no hope, but I want to tell you this morning, God is on the move and God is ready to do miracles. So many times we forget what he has done and we think, oh God, we need a miracle. But yet, do we really in our heart believe that he's going to do that miracle? He just said, there is nothing too big for me. He said, I will take care of it. It was just right there. Now, my advice to you is to take that and hold on to that and believe that. That he is going to bring me through. Because it doesn't matter how dark it is. It doesn't matter how deep that valley is. God's going to bring you through. With the raising your hand, you're saying, brother, I, I, I'm believing right now that he's going to bring me through. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we look to you this morning, God. Lord, we feel your presence here already. And for that alone, we give you glory and honor. For we are not worthy to be in your presence. But your love is so great that here we are in your presence. 
For God, this morning we look to you that you sweep across this church, God. That you move in such a mighty way that there's not one here that will leave the same that they came in. But God, they will leave so on fire, so touched by you that they can't wait to see what's in store next. And God, we give you glory for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, my soul is hungry and thirsty within. I'm not satisfied with where I have been. And this feeling inside me, I just can't ignore. Lord, I am hungry for more. I am hungry for more. Hungry for more of you. Like never before, I'm hungry for more of you. tongues and interpretation this morning and in both cases he's asking us to take some action in the first interpretation we've got to come to him and believe he is who he is second interpretation we have to believe that he can do what he said he's going to do amen well yes amen 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 you can be seated if you can we're going to have a special this morning Amen. 
Sister Darla is going to bring forth the special. Sister Poole, I was just more confirmation on how the spirit works. The special that's going to be sung is going to be just what you talked about this morning. You know, we all sometimes are on that mountain. Sometimes we're in the valley. Sometimes when we think everything's just going just fine, and you get blindsided. Amen. But I'm here to encourage you today and let you know that it, when it seems like everything is dark, <laughs> that God still brings that light into every situation. He's the same upon that mountaintop as he is in the valley. And we need to keep our eyes upon Jesus, as Sister Poole was saying this morning. He is the lily of the valley. But the name of the song this morning is for the God on the mountain. Life is easy when you're up on that mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. But then things change and you're down in that valley. Don't lose faith for you're never alone. For the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, yes, He'll. But it's down in that valley of trials and temptations. That's where your faith is really put to the test. For the God on the mountain is the God in The God of the day is the God in the night. Praise God. How many believe that this morning? So many times we let our situation determine our praise. How many knows God's the same whether you're having a good day or a bad day, and he's still worthy of praise? 
Don't let your bad day stop you from praising him because he's worthy. We're going to dismiss our kids back to kids' church. Amen. Look at them go. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, I'd like to turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17, and we're going to read verse number 48. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse number 48. Good to feel the presence of the Lord in here today. He's not dead, is he? He's alive this morning. We don't serve a dead beat, dead God. We serve a living God this morning. 1 Samuel 17, verse 48. If you'd like to stand for the reading of the word, you're able, feel free to if you'd like to. It says, and it came to pass when the Philistine arose and he came and he drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened and he ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. This morning I want to preach on the thought of quit backing down to your giants. Quit backing down to your giants. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. God, for your presence. God, that we've already experienced here this morning. God, I thank you, Lord, for speaking to us through tongues and interpretation of tongues. Lord, giving us confirmation that you are the same and you never change. And God, you helped me before, and I know you can help me again. God, I need you this morning to help me to say and deliver, God, what you want delivered and spoken here this morning. And Father, I pray, God, that you would anoint every ear to hear and God, every heart to receive. And God, everything that I say, let me say it under the unction and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. God, anoint us and help us. Lord, to receive your word with gladness this morning. God, I pray all this today in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, you may be seated this morning. Quit backing down to your giants. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I mean, he's glad this morning can still touch us and heal us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just continue to pray and just continue to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you spoke, God, to us this morning, said there's nothing too hard for you. And God, we believe right now, God, that you can touch right, right where she's at, Lord. And God, meet that need, Father. God, restore health right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Quit backing down to your giants. We know Goliath was several feet taller than David. We know he was a skilled warrior. Right? right? Goliath was a man who was experienced in battle, but David was a young boy who had his God. Amen? Goliath would, would come out every day, and he would taunt the army. He would mock them, mock their God, and the army was afraid. 
We know that they were most of them hiding and they were feel fearful of Goliath. Yes, Goliath was bigger, stronger, more skilled than David. But David did not back down to his giants. Amen. David did not back down to his giant, even though he was bigger, even though he was stronger, and even though that he was more skilled than David, David did not back down to his giants. Amen. We all have pro probably have giants in our lives this morning, problems or situations that seem bigger, stronger than we are. They may seem to be unsolvable. Amen. But those are things that we should not back down from. Amen. We try to avoid them or try not to talk about them or we may not even want to face them. But we should not back down from these problems, situations or things that are, seem to be bigger than what we are. Amen. We need to understand that our God is bigger. Our God is stronger and our God is more than able to deliver us from our giants today. Amen. David did not back down to his giant. The scripture tells us as we read this morning that David ran toward his Goliath. He ran toward his giant. He didn't run away. He didn't hide with the rest of the army. It would have been a lot easier for David to sit down with everybody else behind a rock or behind whatever they were hiding from and begin to look around and see how big and bad his giant was. He could have sat with everybody else, amen, looking and saying, well, Goliath, yeah, he's 14 feet tall. Yeah, he's got a big sword and a big spear. It would have been easier for David to sit with everybody else but David knew that his God was able to deliver him David knew that he had to get up and do something that day and the Bible says that David ran toward his giant he didn't hunker down he didn't hide he didn't look at his inabilities so many times we look at what we cannot do because we are limited in our flesh, but we serve a God that is unlimited, all powerful, all able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can even imagine and think. Don't back down from your giants this morning because the same God that you and I serve is the same God that David serves, amen? Amen. David said, everyone else may be backing down, but I will not back down from this giant. Amen. I have the Lord on my side. When giants pop up in our lives, amen, we need to make sure that we do not back down. Amen. We need to face them head on in the name of the Lord. Amen. Don't let your giant intimidate you. Amen. Don't, Don't let, let your, your giants, giants intimidate you. you. Understand that your God is bigger than your giants. Amen. David didn't back down. Why? In verse 45, uh, if you want to look there, it says, Then David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with the sword and with the spear and with the shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast Defied. David didn't back down because he came to Goliath, amen, in the power and the authority of Almighty God. David knew that he was bigger. David knew that he was more skilled. David knew, amen, by looking at it in the natural, David would be defeated. But David didn't look at it in the natural. He looked to his God that was supernatural. And David said, you come to me with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Amen. David went to his giant in the power and the authority of Almighty God. Amen. He went to Goliath. Amen. In the name of the Lord to face him. In the name of the Lord, the name of the one that had never lost a battle. In the name of the one that had never been defeated before. And how many knows he's still not been defeated today? Amen. God is bigger than our giants. Amen. 
David knew he couldn't do it alone. David knew he couldn't do it by himself. But he knew if the Lord was on his side that he could defeat his giant. Amen. Daniel, we know the story of Daniel. Daniel didn't back down from his giant. Daniel chapter 6 verse 7 says all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains, they have consulted together to establish a royal statue and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Daniel's giant was a den of lions, right? If Daniel prayed to his God, he would be thrown into a den of lions. Daniel was surrounded by people who were trying to entrap him. They were jealous of him and they were trying to do everything they could to prove him wrong or to get him in trouble. Amen. If you read the story, you'll find that Daniel, amen, was being blessed of God. He was doing a good job. He was one of the best workers in the kingdom. Amen. He was doing what God instructed him to do. He was praying three times a day, going to work, amen, doing a good job of work. And the people around him got angry. They got upset and they tried to trick him. Well, they, well, they did, did trick, trick the king, king to make the decree that if anyone else would pray to any other God, that they would be thrown into the den of lions. We know Daniel had a decision to make. Am I going to run from my giant? Am I going to hide from my giant? Or am I going to stand and am I going to face my giant? We know that Daniel decided, amen, to continue to pray. And Daniel stood against his giant and he faced him, amen. The Bible says that he continued to pray three times a day with his window, or with his blinds open. Amen. And he continued to defy the decree that was set forth. And you know the story. Amen. That the, the people went to the king and said, King, you made this decree. Now you got to stand by this decree. And we know that they convinced the king to throw Daniel into the lion's den. And we know that even when the king threw the Daniel into the lion's den, that Daniel had impacted the king so much that the king said, Surely thy God will deliver thee. Amen. We don't know how we react to our giants, how that impacts those around us. Daniel didn't back down. Daniel didn't whimper and whine. Amen. Daniel stood firm on his conviction to pray. And Daniel continued to pray. He did not allow his giant or the lion's den or the fear of the lion's den hinder his walk and his relationship with God. We cannot allow our giants to stop us from being what God's called us to be. Amen. Don't Don't let let your giants giants intimidate you. you. Don't Don't let let your giants giants keep you from praying. You stand and you pray no matter how difficult it may seem. Amen. Don't Don't give in to the pressure. pressure. Amen. Of not praying. Because I mean, the devil will love it more to keep you from praying. But we must continue to face our giants and we must continue to pray. Daniel prayed and we know the story that he was thrown into the den of lions, but we know that God sent an angel and shut the lion's mouth, right? Hallelujah. God was able to bring Daniel through and Daniel defeated his giant of the lion's den. We know the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't bow down to their giant. Daniel chapter 3 verse 10 says, Thou king, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. Amen. The three Hebrew boys had to make a decision. They had to, amen, to face their giant. Either they were going to bow down and worship the false god when they heard the sound of the music, or they were going to stand up and say, we will not bend and we will not bow to any other god but God Jehovah. We had, they had to make a choice and a decision. Their giant was a fiery furnace. If they did not bend and they did not bow, they would be thrown 
into a fiery furnace. But we all know the story. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refused to bend and they refused to bow. And the Bible says they heated up the furnace seven times hotter and the men that threw them into the fire, amen, fell to the ground and were dead because of the heat from the fire. But we know because they did not bend and they did not bow that Jesus showed up in the fiery furnace. The Bible says they were loosed and they walked around in the midst of the fire. Amen. They did not let their giant intimidate them. They did not let their giant keep them from worshiping their God. And we know that Jesus showed up. Amen. And delivered them from their giants. Amen. And I believe the same Jesus that showed up in the fiery furnace is the same Jesus will show up in our fiery trials that we have to go through. Amen. Today. But don't bend and don't bow. Don't give up under the pressure this morning. Continue to stand firm upon the word of God. Continue to stand firm in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let your relationship, amen, with the Lord be hindered because of your giant. Continue to worship. Continue to give him the honor he deserves. He deserves to be honored above everything else. Above, above our, our situation, situation above, above our, our giants. giants. So, so many, many times, times we edify and glorify how, how big and how bad our giants are. are. Instead, Instead, we need to look, look beyond our giants and look and see, see how big and how bad that our God is. Amen. Amen. Now, now I've told, I told you some stories story of three guys, or, well, 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 five, five six, six guys, guys that had to face some giants, some giant problems, some giant situations. And I believe the reason why they were able to face their giants is because they know they knew in whom they believed in. Amen. Second Timothy chapter one, verse 12 says for thee, which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Each of these men knew that their God was bigger than their giant. Each of these men knew that their God was able, amen, to deliver them from their giant. Each of these men knew that I did not have to back down or bow down to any other God because they knew that their God was able to keep them and to deliver them. Amen. If we're going to face our giants today, we have to know in whom we believe. We gotta have a relationship with the Lord. We can't be walking at a distance from God and expect Him to deliver us from our giant. Amen. We can't just know about Him. We have to know Him. Amen. We can't just have a casual relationship with Him, but we must know Him in a personal way. We must know him every morning, every afternoon, every evening. We must know him 24-7, 365 days out of the year. Amen? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, David, they knew their God was able. Do you know today that you serve the same God they serve? And do you know that he's still able this morning? He's still able this morning. But, but you've got to know, know it in your heart. heart. I, can I can preach to you till I can't, can't preach no more and tell you how, how, how able God, God is. But, but you, you have to know it for yourself. yourself. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. The Lord. And I, I believe that we, we have to learn to pray about everything to be able, able to face our giants today. today. Amen. Amen. Philippians, Philippians 4 verse 6 says, says be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, how do you get to know God? Through prayer. How do you have a strong relationship with the Lord to know that when a giant pops up in my life that my God is going to help me defeat my giant? is through prayer. Amen? Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. Amen? There's nothing too small to pray about. Amen. Amen. I, believe I believe when we, we learn, learn to pray, pray about, about the small, small things, 
We know that God can deliver us from the small things, that he can deliver us from the big things. If God can help me pay my light bill, amen, God can help me defeat this giant. If God can provide groceries for me, amen, God can help me defeat my giant. If God can heal my headache, he can help me face my giant, amen. When we learn to pray about everything and we see God answer the little things, how many knows that builds your faith? To know know there's there's nothing nothing that God God cannot do. do. Amen. Amen. But we must learn to pray about everything. everything. We We should have have a prayer prayer on our hearts all the time every day. day. Amen. Amen. As As we we work, work, as we we go go through our day, day, whatever we do, we we should have have a prayer prayer on our hearts. Amen. Amen. Because at any time, at any day, a giant can come out of nowhere. We may have have giants giants that we've looked looked at for many days, days, many years, many many months, months, maybe maybe even a century. century. But But there there are giants giants that may may pop out out of nowhere. nowhere. And And we we need need to have have a prayer prayer in our heart that we respond to our giant in the right way. way. Amen. Don't Don't let your giant bring fear to your heart. The Bible says God did not give us the spirit of fear, but he gave us power over fear, right? Amen. Amen. And a sound mind. God wants us to have a sound mind. Satan wants us to be fearful and afraid. He wants our mind to be scared and tormented. But we need to take authority. Greater is he that is in us. Amen. We're not meant to stand against our giants in our own power. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His His might. might. We We must must remember remember today, today, we're not meant to stand against our giants in our own strength, in our own power, in our own skill. You can speak King James all day and all night, but how many knows that only intimidate the devil? Huh? You can see thus thou and thee and however, amen, and you can quote scripture after scripture, but guess what? Satan Satan ain't afraid afraid of the way you talk. It's the power of God that is in us. It's God in us. Amen. We don't have to stand and face our giants in our own strength, our own skill, our own ability. David didn't come to Goliath in his own skill and ability. He came in the power of the Lord. And the Lord gave him the skill to defeat the giant. God will give you what you need to defeat your giant if you understand it's not by might nor by power, but by His Spirit that is in me. Amen. And be strong in the Lord. You can't be a flaky-daky Christian. Just show up to church when you need something or when you want something and expect to be able to defeat your giants. Amen. We have to be strong in the Lord, strong in prayer, strong in the Word of God, strong in our church attendance, strong in our relationship with the Lord. Amen. The giant that was standing, the giant that's standing your way today is not intimidated by you. Amen. And they will not be defeated by you. It's God in us. Amen. We are more than conquerors through that strengthens us. It's not about how strong I am in my natural ability. It's Christ in me. It's Christ in you. Amen. And remember, we can do all things through Christ that what? Strengthens us, gives us the strength. Amen. We're not meant to fight our giants in our own strength, and our own power. And we're not meant to stand against our giants all by ourselves. Amen. And remember, greater is he that is in us. 1 John 4, verse 4, You are of God, little children, and you have overcome them because why? Greater is He that is in you than he that's in the world. Amen. Our God is greater than our giants. Amen. When we back down from our giants, we're telling God, I don't believe you are who you say you are. But we need to understand God is greater than our giants. Amen. Remember when we're weak, he's strong. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength, 
Talking the Lord talking here. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. We need to remember today when our giant is towering over us, saying things against us, trying to push us down, trying to get us to give up. Hey man, when we are weak from the battle, when we don't have no strength to pray for ourselves, we can call on somebody else to pray for us. Hey man, but we must also remember that His strength is made perfect in our weakness. Amen. Even when we are weak, we can still defeat our giants. Because it's God in us that gives us the power and the ability to defeat those giants today. Amen. God don't need you to be strong. He needs to be strong in us. Amen. So when you're weak and you're worn and you're tired and you're worn out, know that God is still strong and God is still able and God can still do what you need Him to do today. He can help you defeat your giants. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Don't wave the white flag and say, I surrender today. Stand tall and say, well, my my body may be weak. My mind may be tormented and wore out from the battle. I may be physically weak and tired and weary from the battle. But the God in me is still strong and still able to defeat my giant today. Hallelujah. When we are weak, He is strong. Amen. And we must remember that we have to submit. We have to be willing to submit. We want God to defeat our giants in our lives. We have to be willing to submit to Him. James 4 verse 7 says, Submit yourselves, therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. We love to hear the part, uh, resist the devil, and he'll flee. But we don't like the submit part. See, a lot of people love to hear that part, the second part, but they don't like the first part. But if we fail to submit, we won't defeat our giants. If we fail to do it our way and not God's way, we won't defeat our giants. But if we will come under submission to God and we have submitted ourselves there to the poor to God and we stand and we resist our devil, our, our giant, how many knows he has to flee from us? He may not flee the first time you speak, but how many knows you need to continue to stand and continue to speak? Amen? David ran toward Goliath. Amen? So many times we hunker and hide from our giants. We need to stand up, submit ourselves, therefore to God, run toward our giant, and watch God remove our giants from our lives. Don't run away from your giant. Don't hunker down and hide from your giant. Stand and submit yourself to God. Resist that giant. Watch him flee from you. Amen? My closing scripture today. You all should know this by now. Isaiah 54, verse 17. Brother Dan returns to the music. Isaiah 54, verse 17. I hope you got this marked. If you don't, mark it. You don't mark in your Bible, write it down. It says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me. Say it. This is our heritage this morning. This is your heritage, this is my heritage, that no weapon formed against me or you shall prosper. Amen. Let's stand this morning. When you accepted Christ into your life, Satan waged war on you. He said, I want to take them out, I want to bring them back, and I want to gain control of their life. Serving God's not always a walk in the park. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Satan has weapons. He has giants. He has schemes. 
He has potholes and pitfalls already set in place to try to trip you up, try to take you out, and try to take you down. He's got giants that are standing right here today in front of some of you this morning. And he's trying to use to intimidate you, trying to tell you he's going to win. But we need to understand this morning no weapon formed against us shall prosper. This is our heritage today. As we bow our heads and close our eyes this morning, first of all, if you're here today, you're not where you need to be with God. You don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have a giant standing in front of you called sin. Today, Jesus can defeat that giant of sin. If you'll come to this altar and say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. He can break that yoke, that bondage of sin that may be trying to hold you back today. If you're here today, you're not where you need to be with God. First, I want to invite you to this altar that you can come and receive salvation through Jesus Christ. Or maybe you're here this morning. You're a child of God, but you've been facing some giants. If you got some giants in your life today, I invite you to come and stand right here in the front. Don't get on your knees, but you stand today and say, today I'm going to take a stand against my giants. I'm not going to bow down. I'm not going to weaken, but I'm going to stand against my giants. Come on, somebody else. You got some problems, some situations that seem like they're just never going to be solved. Come today and say today, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Make a line across the front. Today I'm taking a stand. I'm going to stand in the name of the Lord. And I'm going to stand against my giants. They've tormented me. They've pushed me down. They've come against me long enough. Come on, somebody else. You want to defy your giants, come. Say today, I'm going to stand in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You tired of the enemy this morning, come. Hallelujah, those of you up here begin to stand in the power and the authority of God and get to speak against your giant. Anybody else? Can I have some people come stand behind these that have come and help them pray against their giants? Come on, give me some people to come stand behind these. Let them know you're standing with them. The Bible says where two of us would come to agreement on any one thing, it shall be done. Hallelujah. Come on, give me somebody right here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Begin to worship Him, you up here. Begin to thank Him for delivering you from your giant. This is the last time. Hallelujah. Come on, begin to defy those giants. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. When I walk through deep waters, I know that you will be with me. When I'm standing in the fire, I will not be overcome. valley of the shadow I will not fear I am not alone I am not alone you will go before me you will never leave me I am not alone I am not alone
night will not overtake me. I am pressing into you. Lord, you fight my every battle. Oh, and I will not fear, because I am not alone.
trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. It's my trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought you, Lord, and you heard, and you answered. Oh, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. Oh, testimony. So those of you that came up here today, I want you to find three people and tell them, I'm going to see my giant leave. I'm going to see my giant leave. Amen. By faith. Tomorrow's a new day. You may have new giants, but this one that's here today. Amen. Come on by faith. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There's a mighty big mountain standing in my way. There's a mighty rough waters and some mighty big waves. But there's nothing that's too big for him. So it's a mighty big mountain. There's a mighty big God, there's a mighty big mountain standing in my way. There's a mighty rough water and some mighty big waves, but there's nothing that's too big for him to solve. It's a mighty big mountain, but he's a mighty big God, but there's for him to fall. It's a mighty big mountain, but he's a mighty big God. He's a mighty big God. Thank God. Lord. You believe that today? Amen. I hope today the Word of God's challenge you to quit backing down from your giants. 
Amen. Remember service tonight, 6 o'clock choir practice, 5 o'clock. Please be here promptly at 5. Amen. Let's bow our heads to be dismissed today. Sister Darla, could you dismiss us this morning?